Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Join Mayor Sly James and the Kansas City Streetcar Authority as we unveil Kansas City's first new streetcar station stop. Be the first to see the new streetcar platform and shelter as it is installed at 16th and Main from 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday, April 24th. There will be a live band plus food and drink from Nara's and Anton's and you can take pictures using the station stop as a photo booth. The fountains have been turned back on for the season. The mayor and city staff flipped the switch during the annual Fountain Day celebration. This year, the celebration highlighted the iconic J.C. Nichols Fountain, which is shining bright after complete rehab over the winter months. We all know that Kansas City has become known for a lot of truly wonderful things. A growing tech industry, uh, the charming Royals, the success of the Royals team. But people have always and will always identify Kansas City as the city of fountains. These beautiful structures make our home city more picturesque and inviting and set us apart from any other city in the world. They serve as a source of pride for our residents. Uh, and recently, one of our most iconic fountains here behind us has gotten a mega facelift. And it's something that's been needed and something that I think is really going to pay dividends. And as I like to tell people, if you can't love Kansas City now, then I don't know when you ever will. Thank you very much. The city's spring curbside leaf and brush continues the week of April 20th for residents in the central zone. Pickup for residents in the north zone will be the week of April 27th. Residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb on their regularly scheduled trash day. For more information about the Leaf and Brush pickup schedule, visit kcmo.gov and search for Leaf and Brush. This weekend, Pershing Road is closed in front of Union Station. NBC's heart-pounding competition series American Ninja Warrior is filming episodes in front of the historic building. The newly reinstituted Kansas City Film Office assisted in bringing the production to Kansas City. So to date, as of today, um, the office has assisted 76 productions since October the 1st. And that is a, a great indicator of why this office is so necessary as part of a Kansas City uh, tourism. And one of the great things about that is keeping our crews working. And once they're working, you know, they're buying things, or they're buying houses, they're buying cars, and, and everything you know, starts to really, really thrive. And we've been there, and we are certainly on our way to an even brighter future and bigger vision. The Kansas City episodes will put our city in the national spotlight when the new season starts in late May. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. My name is Jason Waldron and I'm the Deputy Project Manager of the Kansas City Streetcar Project. Uh, what we see here today is the first of 16 platforms, or we're going to have 16 stops on the streetcar alignment, and each stop will have a platform. Um, these stops are innovative and we're very excited and proud of them because they're multi-level and what that means is the platforms will enable ADA level loading for both the buses and the streetcars. Um, what, that, what it does is it enables us to service both buses and streetcars at the same location. And what that does is it will cut down on the number of platforms needed for streetcars and buses, um, which uh, will provide less conflict with a, a, adjacent businesses as well as um, less maintenance costs and, and really less clutter along the alignment. Most of the platforms will be eight feet wide as you move through the platforms and in addition in most locations, in fact almost all locations, pedestrians will be able to actually walk on adjacent to the platform as well so we can separate our transit users from our pedestrian traffic. Most of the platforms will have a seat wall where uh, users can lean against it and rest against it and that seat wall will include, most of them will include a shelter which will shelter you know our users from the elements and things like that. Um, in addition with our 1% art program many of the shelters will have an art application um, added to the shelters. Um, and each platform station stop location does have a marker, which will be a, you know easy way to identify where each station stop is, and it'll also include a location map uh, indicating all the stops along the alignment, as well as some other features, maybe some bus stops, maybe where our bike share locations are. Yeah, we've had a number of other communities interested in, in our uh, streetcar project, which lets us know that 
we may be one of the leaders uh, in streetcar projects, but we do know that some of our neighbors and friends are very close behind us. You know, they're, they're very interested in how and what we're doing. So they're coming and visiting and, and seeing how we're doing this. Um, you know, much like our streetcar system, our platforms, you know, it, they are innovative. We are very proud of them by able to combining some of the bus and streetcar locations. But, you know, we fully expect this to be more the norm than, than the exception for future projects. The overflow control plan, part of it is to keep stormwater from going into the sewer, um, to manage stormwater in a way that will keep it from causing problems further downstream. Um, the projects that I'm involved with are the green infrastructure projects, and so far we've built our Middle Blue River green infrastructure pilot project, and it's in a part of town called Marlboro also. Um, where we have installed about 135 vegetated green infrastructure in the right-of-way. And so, so far that's the main project we've built. It manages about a hundred acre um, watershed, it takes the water and keeps it out of the sewer. The rain gardens or the green infrastructure that we have in the pilot area, the water from the street, it comes into the rain garden and it slowly soaks into the ground and some of it the extra goes back to the sewer so that we don't cause um, you know deep water. It soaks in within 48 hours. The, the deep rooted plants in the garden help bring the water down into the soil layers. The green infrastructure projects we are installing them early in the process so that we can learn from them and see which ones work best in Kansas City and which ones are the most functional and most cost effective. There was a lot of residents and, and neighborhoods that are asking for green infrastructure projects because it's a way to bring additional benefits instead of just a, a pipe underground that, that is bringing benefit but you don't see it. It's a way to bring benefit um, on the surface and also create an opportunity to revitalize an area or at least to provide the starting point where other um, revitalization efforts can build upon it. Well, this project has uh, worked very closely with the neighborhood organization, the Marlboro Coalition, to look at the locations where um, they're having challenges and places that we can do, use our project to help spur change or to spur improvement. So the locations for this portion of the project that were looked at, there were a few open areas that were perfect for stormwater management so we could catch the water in an effective, cost-effective way while also improving, um, improving that environment. So for example, the Rachel Morado site is going to have, um, it'll be turned into more of a park-like atmosphere. We'll keep some of the trees but we'll open up the views significantly and bring in cascading bioretention cells and a sidewalk and trail system. And we're working um, closely with the other city departments to leverage what we're doing here to bring in other benefits too in working with the neighborhood. City employees will be picking up trash in the Dunbar and Swope Parkway neighborhoods in recognition of Earth Day as part of the KC Trash Bash. Residents are encouraged to pick up trash in their own neighborhoods or around their workplace the week of April 19th. Please tweet us your cleanup photos to at KCMO and use the hashtag KCTrashBash. Photos can also be posted on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash KCMOGov. The City of Kansas City, Missouri is calling for nominations for its KC Green Neighborhood Recognition Program. The program recognizes neighborhoods that have implemented sustainable practices. Applications will be accepted until June 2nd. Forms are available at kcmo.gov. Just search for Neighborhood Recognition Program. Or you can call 816-513-3460. The city's KC Green Initiative advances social equity, economic vitality, and environmental quality by promoting sustainable practices in projects and programs citywide. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To watch this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the weekly report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.